Hi, this is Alex from phpacademy.org with a video tutorial for the new Boston. In this tutorial, we're going to look at implementing jQuery into a page and just testing if it actually works or not. So one of the things that we need to do, uh, first of all, is go over to the jQuery.com homepage. And you'll see here that we can actually download jQuery. Now, there's a production and a development version, and you're going to need to choose the production version. The development version you'll notice is slightly larger, it's 229 KB and this is uncompressed code. Now the reason for this development version is if you are developing plugins and need access to the um, uncompressed code for jQuery. However the production version is only 31 kilobytes and is minified and gzipped. Now let's take a look at the difference between them quickly you'll see that the uncompressed code just looks like normal JavaScript, um, a large, large file, um, as, uh, as you would expect from a 229 KB file. Let's go and look at the production version. You can see that it's still long, but it has been compressed uh, to create a shorter file size. So once you have the production version selected, go ahead and download jQuery. It should open up in your browser as code, what you're going to want to do is select the entire page and copy it to your clipboard. Copy. Now we want to come over to your text editor and before we paste it into a file we'll just have a look at our directory structure before we continue. Now when I write uh, any JavaScript code I keep it in a file called JS. Index.php is the file that we've got currently open here and JS is where I would keep all of my JavaScript um, files. So let's just look in JavaScript. You can see that I've created a file called jQuery.js. I've given it a JS extension and that's the file we've also got open in our text editor. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste the code from jQuery and I'm going to paste it into this jQuery.js file. Let's go back again now inside index.php and I'm going to include this jQuery file that is found in the JS folder. So that's essentially the directory structure we're going to be keeping and where we place jQuery in order to include it into our page. So like I said I've got this jQuery.js file open in the JS folder and I'm just going to paste the code that I retrieved from the jQuery.com website. Now I'm going, well I've saved it out and I need to come over to index.php in order to include it into my page. So, how do we include it? Well, usually when you're writing code, uh, JavaScript code, you would start in your head and you would do something like script type is equal to text forward slash JavaScript. So we've got the type attribute in the script tag. And then we would come down and we would end our script and we would write our JavaScript code in here. Now, because jQuery is uh, a 31 KB file and uh, we need the body of the document to load before we actually um, use things like event, uh, ev event handling, you'll notice in the last example I showed you with the hide and show button, um, we actually need to allow every element in our page to be able to load before we actually start to check for elements. So we're not going to be writing any code or including any files in the head part of our document. We're going to be doing it at the very end of our body. So let's go ahead and type script type equals text forward slash JavaScript. And let's go ahead and end that script there. Now usually you would write your code in here. However, what we're doing is we're including this um, just because uh, we don't want to paste our code into our document. So it would work if you were to paste the jQuery um, file into this document. Let's just wait for that to load. Okay, so I've just managed to get rid of that because the uh, file size of that crashed my browser, so the example didn't really work. However, um, my point is that we could write our JavaScript code inside of here. However, what we're doing is we're just simply starting this script tag and ending it but we're supplying the source attribute. So we can say js forward slash jQuery.js. Now because we've pasted our jQuery code in here, this is now available to use in this document. We can write all of our code up here, 
and uh, we'll still have um, use of the jQuery library. So now what we want to do, now that we've included jQuery into our page, is actually testing whether it works. So in the next video, we're going to be short creating some short inline um, jQuery, which is highly discouraged, just so we can test the functionality of jQuery and see if it's worked by including it uh, by this method. You'll often find that if you were to include jQuery and you, did it, you didn't do it properly, you'll have no control uh, or, or use of jQuery at all. So extremely, it's extremely important if we just create a simple inline test um, just to see if it's worked. Now, if you're not sure of the uh, difference or the similarities or you know the rights or wrongs of inline or external uh, JavaScript, then uh, this will be explained in uh, another video. And we, you'll be able to understand why it's not so good to use inline uh, JavaScript or jQuery. Now, if you remember the example we looked at a couple of videos back, you'll notice that I was using um, external JavaScript and there was no actual JavaScript present within my button or the paragraph that I, that I was actually hiding and showing. So we'll look at that in another video. However, in the next video, we'll look at a quick example to see if jQuery is working on our page.